All right, everyone. Hi, welcome to Maker Monday. Tonight, my name is Jessica, and I'm going to be showing you how to glue and frame your puzzles. If you're like many of us during quarantine and you found yourself bored and you picked up a jigsaw puzzle and made one or two or maybe 10, um, and you might be thinking, well, what am I going to do with these? Um, some of them are just too pretty to put back in the box. Um, so there are ways that you can frame it and hang it in your home. So the first thing I'm going to walk you through are the uh, supplies that you'll need. Then I'm going to show you a little bit more closely uh, some tips and tricks on how to glue your puzzle. And lastly, I'm going to show you some options you have with framing your puzzle. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments as you, as you uh, come up with them. I'll try to answer them uh, during the session. And if not during, then right at the end, I can answer your questions for you. Okay, so I'm first going to walk you through what you need. Okay, well, number one, your puzzle, right? So I have here um, wax paper and a cardboard. So basically, you can either use wax paper, a piece of cardboard, or even some old newspaper to put your puzzle down on. Now, if you have your puzzle already on a table that you don't mind getting some glue on, uh, well, then glue your puzzle right on the table. Um, but if you're like many people who don't want to do that, um, I've had this piece of cardboard for quite some time. You might be able to see there's a lot of glue on it already. Um, I actually work off of a puzzle board on my bed, and then I transfer the puzzle onto the cardboard, which is actually pretty easy to do. All you have to do is um, get your piece of cardboard level with your table or your puzzle board and slide your puzzle right on there. It sounds easier than you think. Uh, the wax paper and the newspaper, if you try to slip it under the puzzle, it might catch on a few pieces, but you can maneuver it to work. Um, so either way, um, that can protect your table. So now I'm going to uh, walk you through what actually you need to glue it. So there's a few brands out there that do make puzzle glue. I have found that this has been the best one yet. It's actually Mod Podge, but they make specifically a puzzle glue. So you want to look for this label if you decide to go with Mod Podge. And this is an eight food ounce bottle. And I bought two because I had an 18 by 24 puzzle I did before. And I can show you, I barely used even a third of it, like barely. So it does go a long way um, for the puzzles. The other thing you're going to need is something to glue with. So I actually use this. It's a two inch flat chip brush. Um, this is old. Actually, my parents gave it to me. They used to paint with it in the house. <laughs> no more. Um, and you can see it's kind of gunky. It's kind of got some glue on it already, but I only use it for puzzle making. So um, I prefer to use these. If you go any smaller, it's going to take forever to glue your puzzle. And if you go any bigger, you could, but you might run into missing a lot of um, pieces when you go over with the glue. So I find that this is a pretty uh, good medium sized. Um, for gluing our puzzles. And then the only other thing that you might need is once your puzzle is finally glued, you might need, this is actually an envelope opener or a butter knife or a box cutter, something you might have to go along the edges here. I can show you on this side, this side, there we go. Um, you might have to go along the edges and just kind of get your puzzle away from the glue. Sometimes the glue gets into the seams of your puzzle and onto the board doesn't really harm anything, um, but you might have to use a knife or something to get it off. So um, I'm going to walk you through now some tips on how to glue your puzzle. All right, so I'm going to hopefully zoom in here. And I have to give a shout out and a kudos to Adam. Uh, he's a coworker of mine who's letting me borrow his webcam and stand for this. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. There we go. I'm, I usually work, I go in the upper left hand corner and work down and in and then to the other side. You could do whatever you want. I find that I like to make sure my corners are done first, um, but certainly you can glue however you feel. Now what I like to do is since I can't really dip my brush in my Mod Podge, if you can see it, um, I actually pour some of the glue right onto my puzzle and then I spread it out with my brush. So I'm gonna demonstrate that now for you. You can get a really good sized dollop. 
works again. If you don't, you're going to be here for a while. And you might, if you want to, put on some nice relaxing music. Kind of zone out. So I want to make sure you can see this. Yeah, that's pretty good in the camera. So you can see that. Okay, look, you can see where the glue is getting into the crevices of the puzzle pieces. That's what you want. Now you also notice, you go, oh wait, there's some kind of air bubbles coming on. You may have to go over with your paintbrush a few times. And what I have done in the past is when I find a gap, I actually wiggle my brush, and go right over here, into the cracks to get it in there. And then you just want to smooth it out again, make sure your lines are even. I will say, um, some of the brush strokes with the glue do come up once your puzzle is dry. So what you do want to aim to do is if you have your brush strokes going in one way, try not to make them go the other way. It's much like painting um, a wall or anything. You want to keep your brush strokes going all the same way. So I'm actually going to get the top here because I didn't get the edge. By the way, um, I'm actually gluing a Disney puzzle that I got the last time I was at Disney. It's not a Thomas Kincaid, but it's got the castle and the Mickey characters, and I love it. And I'm missing Disney. So why not glue one of my favorite puzzles? I don't know if you can see, I'm working in the corner here, and it's giving me some issues. I got, you'll see like the edge pieces sometimes you gotta go over a few different ways with your brush. Get really get it in there. I'm having some issue with that corner one, but it looks like I got it. Now this glue will dry clear. Um, you'll actually notice as we go along, um, you'll see that it actually starts to dry clear. Down a little bit. And that's what you want. Ooh, I got a big lab. There we go. So again, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and pop them in the comments. And again, this is why you might need the butter knife or a box cutter on the ends here. Because you have to kind of get make sure you get the glue right on the edges, especially because they're on the ends. And that's okay. So just to give you guys some background as I'm showing you how to glue here. Got to get in the crack there. Okay. I've been gluing puzzles since I was a kid. <laughs> um, I've always loved doing puzzles. I get them at Christmas time. And uh, I used to get them from Bits and Pieces catalog. I don't know if anyone uh, has heard of them. They're still in business. And actually, when I was trying to look through their catalog during... Um, when everyone was in quarantine from March to June, they were on back order. So many people were um, putting together and buying puzzles because there wasn't as much to do if you were at home. And plus, it's a wonderful activity you can do with your kids, with your, um, you know, with grandparents. And really, I would say, um, like I said, I was a kid when I started to do this, so. I mean, 10 and up, you can certainly help show them how to glue, and they can they can do this themselves. It's not too bad. So I want to show you so you can kind of see we're white over here, and already I just glued that, and it's drying clear already, which is good. That's what you want. But that's how quickly it starts to dry and clear. I have to say that, you know, depending on the puzzle, I have found that a lot of my puzzles dry really quickly, especially with the with the uh, Mod Podge glue. Um, it tends to dry really quickly. Now I see a spot here. And again, these ends. And if you feel like it, if you think you may have missed a spot on your ends the first time, and it's dry, you can, like, like even clearing up like I showed you before, you can go ahead and go over it again. 
just with some more glue. Big thing is you just want to keep your brush strokes the same. Can't really mess this part up too, too much. But I love this brush because I can see how it's angled. It helps to get like right in there. It really does. And I'm not seeing too many bubbles coming up either, which is really good. I'm going to move my camera down a little here. There we go. All right. Now, this is a Facebook Live video, but it is recorded then. So you can always go back. If you want to look over something again, you can. Or you can share it. I have to be honest. I'm not a crafty person. And when... Our, our, my uh, co-workers, we were looking for program ideas and they're going, can't we bring back the Maker Mondays? And I said, sure, but all I really know how to do is glue a puzzle. But I figured with, again, some people doing more puzzles during quarantine, why not? I can show you how to glue. Yeah, there we go. So don't be afraid to use too much glue. It's gonna dry clear. Oh, hi. I've got a cat on the other side of my table. Say hi, Zuzu. Hi, Zuzu. All right. All right. Cats are curious. I will say, um, <laughs> which brings up a good point. If you have children, young children, and pets at home, like some cats, hi, Zuzu, um, you definitely want to work off of a table where they're like, what are you doing? And then they're just like, yeah, no, you're not getting up here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back up where it's already, that, that's already been glued. I'm going to go next to it, pour my glue and brush. I have my brush strokes going this way. I want to keep it that way. Now, I will say that I wish my piece of cardboard was slightly bigger than this just because I feel more comfortable gluing right on it but that's okay now you'll see I'm going over where I already glued that's okay I'm trying to make sure that I really get into these pieces to glue it I will say um, if you end up touching your puzzle as it's gluing, just go over it with some more glue. You might leave a fingerprint because it gets tacky. I've done it, trust me. Um, so all you want to do is go back over with some more glue, try to get that fingerprint out. Like I said, you put on some nice calming music, get your favorite beverage, And you just keep working with your brush. It's very much like painting, except the good thing is it's just glue and it's supposed to be there. It's not like you're painting something that shouldn't be there. Which, if you have kids, not quite young, but if you have kids, you can certainly get them involved if you like in this process. You can give them a smaller paintbrush actually that they can dip inside to the glue and you can have them help you glue the puzzle. So this certainly can be a family activity. All right. And I was never good at keeping my angles perfectly, so I do cross over a lot. But again, it's okay. All that means is that those puzzles Get some extra glue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do about half of this puzzle with you guys, and then I'm going to move on to show you what we do afterwards. So I have a few puzzles already glued that I'm going to show you guys in a couple, couple minutes. I'm going to spend about 15 minutes on this part. Now see, I got some part that's like 
There's some glue, but it's not totally in. Take some glue, pour that in, right on there, and brush. Ah, perfect. And you can see there's a lot of glue on my brush. I just kind of try to get it off that way. The nice thing is with this glue, it just comes off with water, soap and water. Um, so if you get it on your hands, it's no big deal. Just some soap and water and you're going to be good to go. Oh. Same thing with a table. If you decide to work off of a table. Um, see, I got some on my finger. It comes off with soap and water. So it's not that big of a deal. I got the Mod Podge glue at Michael's. Um, again, I, I'm saying Mod Podge, but they have a specific glue that's for puzzles. Um, but I got it at Michael's a couple months ago. Um, but I know sites like Amazon, Target, Walmart, they have the glue. Same thing with the paintbrush. You can look at next time you're at, you know, Target, Walmart, Home Depot's, Lowe's, Lowe's. Any one of those will work. Get my hand in the way there. There we go. There we go. So again, you just keep going over. Over the summer, I helped my parents paint over their uh, back patio and it was concrete but there are a lot of like pop marks on it and um i basically say that gluing a jigsaw puzzle is pretty much like gluing or excuse me painting concrete you have to get into all those little crevices and just keep going Okay, I think we're pretty good there. So I'm going to move on over. And you can see we're dry over here. Well, we're getting dry. We're getting clear. And we're going to move. And when your puzzle is totally glued, you're going to see a nice gloss on it. That's the glue. Actually, I'm going to move this up a little bit more. There we go. And we're doing it in. Ooh, that was a big dollop. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. And keep getting into these crevices here. And you can tell when the glue is really in between the pieces when you can see it highlighted like that. I can zoom in even more. Take my hand away. You can see how the puzzle pieces are highlighted. That's how you know you got the glue in the right place there. And Adam, I promise I'm not getting glue on your camera. I don't know if he's tuning in. Spot right here is driving me nuts. I'm just gonna wiggle that in there. Get that in. Good. Okay. Pull it down a little. I had some extra glue on my brush, so I'm just brushing that on. I haven't bought a frame for this puzzle yet because I'm not sure what color frame I want to get. There's a lot of nice bright colors in it. I think I want to go with a white colored frame. I 
And the nice thing is, is, is that once you glue your puzzles, these make great gifts. I've actually made um, my puzzles into several gifts. Um, the one I'm going to show you was a gift from my grandma. And um, I actually put it together and glued it when I was 18. She's had it for all that time. And now it's back in our house and it still looks perfect. I have to say, I took it apart just before and I was like, wow, this actually stayed together. So. It's probably best if you find a nice spot to sit as you're doing this. I'm kind of leaning up and down a little. But that's okay. The ends are probably the trickiest, the end pieces, they tend to be the trickiest. You kind of have to like use the side of your brush. Again, just trying to make sure you're keeping your brush strokes the same way. If it so happens and they, it goes the other way, it's okay. It's going to dry clear. It's really not going to harm it too much. There's really not much during this part that can go wrong. <laughs> really not much. Now I will say there are other options than gluing a puzzle like this. Um, they do make these boards that, um, they're not really boards, it kind of looks like a cardboard with an adhesive backing on one side. And you'd actually put your puzzle right on that adhesive. And then um, you don't even have to glue your puzzle. Problem there is you have to find a way to turn your puzzle upside down and then make sure it gets perfectly onto the adhesive mat. And I found for me, it just never worked as well as the puzzle glue. I just feel it does keep it together better. However, I will say that it does obviously cut down on the amount of time that you need to get your puzzle framed. And I will say it does help create an extra backing. I can show you what the puzzle that I'm going to show you in a minute, um, how the adhesive cardboard back can actually help. I want to get my ends here. And you can see, so we've almost done just about half of this puzzle. I'm right here. Now we have like this much left. This is an 18 by 24 picture. So really, it doesn't take long to do. And over here, we're already doing, you can see kind of how that's going to dry. That's dry. Pretty neat. Pretty neat to see it come together. So I'm going to stop for now. So you, you've seen now how you can glue. Um, I'm going to put my puzzle, I'm going to put my cap on my glue. Now I will say, um, when you are done gluing, the best thing to do uh, is clean your paintbrush right away so it doesn't get all stuck together with the glue. Just simple soap and water will do the trick. Um, same thing, if you get it on your hands, I have some on my hands right now, it comes up with soap, soap and water, no problem. So while your puzzle is drying, you want to keep it somewhere where potentially no furry animals, pets, children, anything will get towards it. Um, again, it does dry with this, the Mod Podge glue, it really does dry fast. I, I know I had one framed maybe two hours after I had glued it. That, that, that was pretty fast. Um, so I'm going to take this now and put it underneath the table. And I'm going to move on and show you how to frame. I'm going to move this on. All right. So. The best thing.
thing I can say with your frame, very much like wood shop. And that is measure twice by a frame once. <laughs> Do you, I don't know if you remember measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Same deal here. And I have learned from personal experience. And by personal, I mean recently. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, measure your puzzle and buy a frame once. So what happens is, you know, most puzzles come with the puzzle box. It'll say, you know, only... Uh, or, or the dimensions, they'll say 18 by 24. I have found that some puzzles in particular, um, when you go to measure them, they're actually slightly off those dimensions. So, I don't know why I have these all together. Um, for example, I have a lot of Thomas Kincaid Disney puzzles that I like to do, and they're from a brand com called Keiko, C-A-E-C-O. For whatever reason, that company likes to, they, they say the, the puzzle is 18 by 24, but I had a 750 piece Cinderella Thomas Kincaid puzzle that I made. And when I measure the dimensions, it's like 18 and 1 16th of an inch by eight by 24 and 1 16th of an inch. So it wasn't quite 18 by 24. So I can show you in a couple minutes, what happens when you buy an 18 by 24 frame and you have a Thomas Kincaid puzzle that's not quite 18 by 24. Let's just say I stuffed it in there, but I shouldn't have <laughs> done it, but it's done. So take it from my personal experience. Um, measure your puzzle twice, buy a frame once. <laughs> so this is a puzzle frame that I bought years ago. This was the one that I gave to my grandmother. This is a really nice frame. Now this one was more money. You can actually simply buy poster frames at about 10 bucks um, and some that are even better when they're on sale. This one, I don't remember how much it costs, but if you can see, it's a real wood frame. You can see the depth of it and that's glass. It's a little dusty, but that's glass. So this is, if you're giving it as a gift, certainly this is a really nice frame. So I'm going to show you the puzzle that I have going in here that's already glued. So here's the puzzle that's going to be going into this frame. I know I can't see quite all of it. I'm going to try to move my camera. Apologies for the movement there. There we go. So this is the puzzle. Um, this is glued on top. On the back, though, I included for extra security a backing. So this is one of those adhesive backs. So this isn't the puzzle itself. You can see on the edges here. <laughs> I didn't quite line it up correctly. So this is the puzzle and this is the backing and underneath is the adhesive. On the corners, you can see it likes to peel away really quickly. So that's why if you're going to use an adhesive backing for your puzzle, I still would suggest you glue it on, on the front. But the backing does give it extra protection. All right, and we're gonna, whoop. Yeah, how about I put it in the right way? That'll help. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you, Laura. Okay. So then we're just going to get our puzzle. Wait, back in the... Pardon me as I push all the tabs in. But while I have you, I will say this. Um, some people might ask, why not just glue the back of the puzzle? Why do you have to glue the front? And it's basically with the shape of the puzzle. If When you look at your puzzle pieces, they're beveled so that they're flat on the back and there's a little bit of bevel on the front. And that allows for the glue to really get into each puzzle piece and stay together. I will say that if you really want extra security before framing your puzzle and putting it back together, you can certainly glue the back of it as well. I did it maybe once. Um, for me, it didn't make much of a difference, but if you feel comfortable doing that, you can. Um, but you definitely want to glue the, the front of it. That's why the glue is made to dry clear. And like I said, you want to keep those brush strokes as um, similar and parallel as possible. 
So I will show you the completed one. So this is a wooden brown frame. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit so you can see it. I'm actually going to, if it lets me, let's see what I can do here. It's done. I'm actually going to hold it up and you're going to see it. There we go. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. A nice wood frame. And it's done and it's ready to give as a gift. It's a nice class. Now I'm going to show you some other ways. So there are times where, if you're like me, you get ambitious and you get a shaped puzzle. And you put it together and it's really dang hard because all the pieces are shaped really weirdly. So this is one that I did a while ago. It's a shaped one. It's a beautiful snow leopard kitty. Yes. Um, and it's a shaped one. I've never framed it because I really wasn't sure how I wanted to frame it. Um, and I didn't want to put it away because it took me forever to put together. <laughs> so I glued it. So one thing you can do is you can use command strips. Um, and many of you might be familiar with them. You would want to get the ones that have the Velcro. So it's like the two strips. And then what you'd want to do, for example, with this one is probably put one here, one here, and one over here. Um, and then what you would do is you put the strips down, you take the one side of the adhesive off, put it up on the wall where you want it to go, and then with the Velcro, you'd want to take the puzzle back off again and give that adhesive time to dry and stay on the wall. And then you can put it back. And the nice thing is, if you don't frame the puzzle, it's relatively light. So it really shouldn't fall off with the command hooks. So that is another way that if you want, if you don't even want to bother with the frame, even for a standard um, 18 by 24 puzzle or whatever you prefer, that's another way to do it. Um, I just wanted to show you that even with some shape puzzles, you do have options to glue them and display them. So I'm going to show you the puzzle that went wrong. <laughs> the puzzle that went wrong, and luckily it still looks okay, was this one. So this was a Thomas Kincaid Beauty and the Beast, which Beauty and the Beast is my favorite. And I was like, yes, I got this together. I'm definitely going to frame it. And I don't know if you can tell, you can't really tell too much in the camera, but right over here it's bevel, and right over here it's sinking a little. That's because it's not exactly 18 by 24. So this is the one where the box said it was, but when I went to measure it, after the fact, it's actually over 18 inches by 24. So you can see on this one side, I'm actually going to hold it up. It's actually not down. Yeah, that's because the puzzle technically does and does not fit. I can't actually had to shave it down with a box cutter, which was interesting. But I do want to share that story with you just because, man, I've been doing this for so long, and yet I never really considered having to measure my puzzle until it happened. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> if you're going to frame your puzzle, make sure you measure it. I will say that typically puzzles right now have a tendency to not be a standard frame size. Um, I have a few that are 20 by 27. And you can find a 20 by 27 frame online. But if you try to look in the craft stores, you can't always find it. So I had some difficulty trying to get the, the frame that I wanted. So I just mentioned that, that if you are looking to frame, um, you might have to do some digging. There are some custom framing sites online. Like I said, I, I, I kind of want to try one out um, later on and see if it'll work for one puzzle that I have. But I wanted to share my oopsie with you. Because it's an oopsie. But this is a typical poster board, um, or poster frame, I mean. It looks a little bit nicer. It was on sale. But it's just a plastic um, acrylic uh, protector on it. There's one more I'm going to show you. Um, and this is one that I've had for many years, over 10 years. It's been in my parents' house. And I won't be able to show the whole thing because it's about a leaf. But this is in a standard poster frame. So 
So when I said that you can just use a poster frame, you really can do it. The thickness of a puzzle typically um, doesn't prohibit you from using standard picture frames. It usually still can accommodate it. Um, I will say again, this is just acrylic on the top. Now this is old, so it's a little, it's a little warped a little bit, but not too much. But you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see right now, <laughs> but this is one of the older or, or original first puzzles that I glued. My brush strokes are going all different ways. I don't know if you can actually see that in the camera. I'll have to take a picture and, and put it in the comments for you guys. But I got smarter <laughs> as I got older. But the, I was maybe 10 or 11 when I glued this. Um, but if you've ever been to Universal Studios, they have Portofino Bay Hotel. I had the opportunity to see it, and it's absolutely stunning. And when I found this puzzle, it was from bits and pieces. I knew I wanted it. Oh, Laura, that one looks hard. You know what, Laura? I don't remember it being too hard. When I look closer, some of the shapes or puzzle piece shapes are really bizarre. <laughs> So it must have been hard, um, but it was totally worth it because, like I said, it's been in my house for ten years at least. So just wanted to show that you don't have to go crazy um, with your frames. You can, if you have a standard puzzle puzzle size, you can buy a standard picture frame. And I think that's all I have. I'm checking my notes to see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Um, I think I covered everything, so I'm just checking our comments to see if I have anything else. Okay, so that's all I have. I'll put a puzzle in front of you so you can see the kitties again, if you'd like. Um, but basically, it, it's really not as hard as you think to glue your puzzle. The gluing part's pretty easy. The framing part can be a little difficult, just because you got to make sure you measure your puzzle. Um, the other thing you might want to consider, if you have a thicker puzzle piece, so I'm, some of you might be aware, if you have a puzzle that's maybe one or 200 pieces and they're thicker, they're bigger, they're easy, easier to see and put together, they are great photographs, they are great puzzles. You might want to get a frame that's a shadow box uh, frame or uh, maybe a floating frame or at least look for a puzzle frame that has a thicker depth and that's because the puzzle pieces themselves won't be this thin. They'll be thicker. So just something to consider. Um, but other than that, that is all I have. And I hope you enjoyed. I want to check in on my puzzle to see how it's doing. Like I said, I haven't glued it all together. Oh, it's doing pretty good. It's still a little wet in here. I'll bring it down. It's still a little white in there. But over here where we glued, this is all dry. This is kind of, it's a little tacky, but actually, oh wow. No, that's dry. So what, just in the 30 minutes that we've been on here, it's drying already? Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can see, I don't know, you might not be able to see, but all my brush strokes in the light, they're going the same way. So at least they're going the same way. <laughs> I've learned. But yeah, so. And you can see this is kind of extra shiny. There'll be a gloss. Um, oh, I did want to show you the shaped puzzle. I never glued the back of it. And it stayed together perfectly. So again, if you'd like to glue the back, you certainly can. But I have found that I haven't really had to do that. Oh. And I have 20 minutes. I could keep gluing. <laughs> I probably should finish it because I'm already halfway through. Although one thing, if you really need to, you can always put so, like a tarp or something underneath your work table if you're afraid that the glue is going to get down there. Really though, it doesn't. I, like I said, we might need to move our butter knife. Actually, I can show you this. So my butter knife is kind of sticking right in here where the glue is drying. And actually, if you get it where your glue hasn't dried yet and you get your butter knife under there, it helps. And I'm just going to keep pushing it under. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention to you guys. You might notice, this has happened to me a, a, a few times. As your puzzle glues, 
it might curl up on the ends. That's okay. Um, what you want to do with that is if you know you're going to frame it right away, once it's dry, the frame is going to take care of that. Um, if you, if it's a shape puzzle or a, just a standard puzzle and you don't want to frame it, but you want to hang it, um, all you need to do is once it, once it's fully dry, go ahead and put like a sheet of paper over it and then put some books on top and let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours to get, oh, my video, um, to get uh, those sides flat again. But I've had it happen a few times, but nothing that would, whoop, camera, nothing that would, um, oh boy. Hi, camera. I either lost the internet. Let's see. Okay, I think we're okay. No, no. Oh, please. It's okay. Please. Haha, -ha, I found the sweet spot. Okay. So anyway, so that's just another tip. Um, if if the ends start to curl, put some books down on them and it'll flatten them out. And I think on that note, my camera here is kind of calling it quit. So I will say, oh, wait. Yeah, Laura, have you ever tried to glue just the back and not the front? Oh, okay. So yeah, Laura, sorry, my camera's going up here. Um, I've never just glued the back. I've always had to glue the front. Um, again, it, it dries clear and it just seems to get the puzzle together better. If that makes sense, it, it just stays together better. Um, I, I, I've never really had an issue with it, honestly. I hope it helps. Um, and then I got another question. Is glue is the glue safe and non-toxic for kids? Sue, as I get my hand in it, <laughs> I will look up here. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. It should say somewhere. I will get back to you on that. I want to make sure that this is non-toxic for kids. My, I'm going to say it is, but I will absolutely make sure about that, and I will post it in the comments. So thank you for asking that. That was a really good question to ask. All right. I kind of made a mess with my glue, but that's okay. So if you take anything out, um, just make sure when you're gluing, um, Use the paintbrush, watch your brush strokes, get into all the cracks. Don't feel, don't be afraid to, why is my camera doing this? <laughs> don't be afraid to uh, go over more than once or twice. Um, when you're framing, measure your frame or me and measure your puzzle. Measure your puzzle twice while you frame once. <laughs> and don't do what I did. And there's my hand. That'll come right off. All right, everyone. Well, I'm going to sign out for now. Apologies for the little bit of glitchiness in the web camera at the end there, but thank you for staying uh, tuned. Um, again, I will answer that question for you about is the glue non-toxic for children? I want to say yes, but I will absolutely make sure and I'll put that in the comments for you guys. All right, everyone. You can still leave comments and questions if you have any. Um, and otherwise, thank you for joining. This is my first time doing anything like this, so I appreciate uh, you coming and your questions and your uh, comments, and I will see you again sometime soon. Thanks, everyone.